Hey everyone, it's Rachel and I am super excited to get to read to you again. Um, another story, our, our reading today is for Palm Sunday and this actually is coming from a different book. So taking a little bit of a break from reading out of the Jesus Storybook Bible. But today the reading is from Marty Mikowski's Gospel Story Bible and I will be doing um, more readings next week during Holy Week out of the Jesus Storybook Bible. So stay tuned for those. Um, but just want to let you all know again that I have been thinking about you and praying for you. And I know the past couple of weeks have been really strange and weird and hard and maybe confusing at times and frustrating at times. Hopefully you're also able to have a little bit of fun at times as well. But I know being away from friends at school and at church and family members, I know that um, might make you feel really, really sad. So just know that I have been praying for you and I will continue to do so. And um, I know that with God's help and by putting our hope and our trust in him, um, that we will all, we'll get through this together. And I know that, um, he is protecting each of us. So, um, I also think that during um, the days leading up to Easter, um, it is super important that we take some time um, as families to um, really reflect and remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for us. And I hope that through the reading today and the readings for next week, um, that especially in the midst of everything happening with the coronavirus, that we can just put aside our worries and we can put aside our fears and we can um, put aside all of our stress that can creep in and that we can um, really focus on and remember the fact that Jesus loves us and that he cares for us and that we can remember the sacrifice that was um that was made on the cross for us. And I just, I pray that that can be at the forefront of our minds as we um, get closer to Easter. So if you have this at home and you want to pause the video and go grab it, great. And if not, then totally cool. You can obviously still follow along. Um, but before I begin with our story today, I do have um, two questions I want to ask you. And even though I can't hear you with your answers, you can talk out loud, say it as a family, talk about it as a family, or just scream it to the screen. But a couple questions that I think will kind of prompt us to, um, to be able to understand our story a little bit better for Palm Sunday. But the first is, have you ever been to a parade? Have you ever seen a parade? And I bet most of you answer yes. Most of you have probably said, oh yeah, I've seen a parade. I know what a parade is. Now, my next question is, say I had never ever been to a parade. I did not know what a parade was. Describe to me Tell me, what would I see if I was going to see a parade for the very first time? Yeah, so I think a lot of you probably said I might see dancing, I might hear music, I might see drummers, lots of loud noises and excitement. And today, the story I'm going to read is about um, a parade that happened in the Bible. And this parade is probably the most important parade that you will ever hear about. So today our reading is called The Triumphal Entry. And again, this is our Palm Sunday reading, or story, I should say. Um, and this is found in the Bible from Luke 19, 28 through 44, and John 12, 12 through 19. So I will read the pages and I will then hold the picture closer to the screen. I'll try to like zoom in since I know it's um, hard to see the picture, especially because these are kind of small. Our story today, the triumphal entry. Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem. 
there were a lot of people on the road with them because it was almost time for Passover, the feast that celebrated God's rescue of Israel from slavery in Egypt hundreds of years before. Each year, thousands of people went to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. When they reached Bethany, Jesus sent two of his disciples into the village to pick up a young donkey they would find in a certain place. Untie the colt and bring it here, Jesus said. If anyone asks you what you are doing, tell him, the Lord needs it. And sure enough, they found the colt tied up, just as Jesus described. As the disciples began to untie it, the owners asked what they were doing. The disciples said the Lord needed it, and the owners let them go. <laughs> the disciples took the donkey to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it to make a saddle. Jesus climbed onto the donkey and rode it into Jerusalem. This fulfilled the words of the prophet Zechariah, who said the king of Jerusalem would come riding the colt on a donkey. Zechariah's prophecy was coming true right before their eyes. But the disciples didn't realize that Jesus was fulfilling Zechariah's word until after he rose from the dead and he was glorified. Then they remembered what had happened that day and they finally understood it. It was about two miles from Bethany to Jerusalem. And as Jesus rode past the Mount of Olives, a great crowd of people gathered along the road. Some of them had seen him raise Lazarus from the dead. Others had heard about his miracles. Everyone was glad to see Jesus. As he passed by, people threw their cloaks on the ground for him to ride on. Some people cut palm branches and waved them, shouting, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Everyone was happy and excited about Jesus. What would he do next? Maybe he was coming to Jerusalem to solve all their problems. But not everyone was happy. The Pharisees did not like what they were seeing at all. The people loved Jesus, but didn't pay much attention to the Pharisees. They complained, look, the world has gone after him. When they heard the people call Jesus a king, they told him to tell his disciples to stop. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if these people were silent, the stones themselves would call out the same thing. So when Jesus got close to Jerusalem, he cried. He knew that the people who were celebrating his arrival didn't understand who would really be, who he really was or why he came to Jerusalem. They wanted, an, they wanted an earthly king to save them from Rome, not a heavenly king to save them from sin. Jesus knew that some of the very same people who shouted, Hosanna, would be shouting, crucify him in just a few days. All right, so that is the end of the story for today for Palm Sunday. Um, and I am so excited to get to read to you what happens over the next couple days. I think it is going to be um, a really, a really neat way for us to, again, remember what Jesus has done for us and um, just be reminded of the way that he loves each and every one of us. So I have just a couple questions I thought I'll ask again, and if you want to shout them out loud, whatever, feel free to do so. If you're not in the mood and you don't want to do these questions, feel free just to turn the video off. Also, if you are interested in doing a more in-depth study of this story I just read, um, you can click on the link below. Um, and it kind of walks you through some different activities. Even if you don't have this book at home, um, based off the story that I just read, or you can turn your Bibles to the, the passage in scripture, there's just a couple more questions. And so if, again, if you want to get um, 
I guess, more involved in the study, feel free to do that as well. All right, so the first question is, and again, I know I can't hear your answers, but you can yell at me at the screen, talk to me at the screen, whisper, whatever, and um, we can still do these together. All right, so let's see if I can get my order here. Okay, so how did the disciples get the cult for Jesus to ride on? So in the story, um, we learned about the cult. How did they actually get the cult for Jesus to ride on? Yes, so Jesus actually instructed them. He told them exactly where to go into the village and exactly where they could find the cult. Good job. What did the people do to pay honor to Jesus? What did the people do to pay honor to Jesus? I'll give you a hint. This is my, this is my homemade palm branch. I'll get, this is my hint. All right. So what did people do to pay honor to Jesus? So they laid palm branches and cloaks on the ground for Jesus to walk on. And they called him King and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Why were the people so excited to see Jesus? What miracle had he performed recently? That's right, that's exactly right. He had just raised Lazarus from the dead. He had just raised Lazarus from the dead. And the word of that great miracle, it spread out among all the people that Jesus had raised a man from the dead. So what did the people shout when Jesus came by? We kind of already talked about this, but what did all the people shout when Jesus came by? That's right. That's exactly right. They shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they called Jesus a king. So friends, that is it for our story today. Um, thanks again for, for joining me, and I look forward to reading to each of you again.